one second while I sync both cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange with the uh, Media Speaks, Teddy Stick, the band Passing Time. High def up there, low def down there, friends. Welcome aboard. Guys, you guys have given me, uh, between the two sites, uh, we're like six, 7,000 hits on the Massive Fukushima show. There's uh, 5,000 hits just on my channel. So I thank you. You guys high def, you guys low def, you guys any def that tune in. Thank you so much. I, um, I do want to remind everyone that this is listener supported. That means you support it. I make zero dollars and zero cents for any of the videos I do. Unless you guys support it. And I know times are hard because most people don't. <laughs> well, to help me out, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. And every penny that you give towards me, I promise you, I promise you, goes towards a better show. Uh, friends, I'm going to get right into the Fukushima news that you wanted. Um, there's going to be the Dunce Cap of the Month Award most likely Friday, I think. I'll be doing that. If not, it will be the very beginning of next week, but I hope to do it sooner. All right, friends, uh, those of you on low def, we're going to go to screen share. Those of you who are with me up there on high def, Pay attention to the screen behind me, and uh, you'll see everything that I'm reading as I read it. This isn't good to read. Uh, the Japan Times News. Seven more Fukushima residents diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Now, do you remember when they told us how safe we were all going to be? How many of you remember them telling us we were fine, right? There was absolutely nothing to worry about. It, the levels were low, right? Not a big deal. Trouble is, the facts lied, and the reason the facts lied is because they wanted to keep the bottom line. They want to keep you investing in GE. They want to keep you investing in TEPCO. That's who GE is. If you think they bring good things to life, then why don't you ask yourself why your money is funding them? To bring more good things to life, like meltdowns? Don't tell me it couldn't have been prevented. It very easily could have been prevented. People warned that it was going to happen, and nobody heeded the warning calls that were given. Nobody cared. Doctors, seismologists, uh, ge geographical experts, people uh, that know about plate tectonics, they warned TEPCO. And they built that anyway. So now they're telling you we're not going to be seeing these, these huge cancer rates? All right, well, take a look. See, see what you think we're seeing here. Seven more Fukushima Prefecture residents who were aged 18 or under at the time of the 2011 nuclear accident have been found to have thyroid cancer, the prefectural government said on Monday. The number of Fukushima residents suffering from thyroid cancer now totals 152, the prefectural government said in a meeting of an expert panel. Now, think about that for a moment, friends. Thyroid cancer isn't that common in people that young. We have 152 cases. But originally they said we weren't going to see many cases of thyroid cancer. Maybe, maybe a couple from the people that were really, really juiced for whatever reason. But not, not, not a large number, right? Well, we're only five years in, and I hate to be the one to tell you this, but 150, what was 152 is a very high number. It's almost unheard of. Go ahead. If you don't believe me, go ask any doctor. The phone book's full of them. Ask thyroid specialists if it's common for people in one area the size of Fukushima Prefecture to have that many people who were that young having thyroid cancer. It's not. It's caused by nuclear radiation, and it's still spewing, and it's coming over here in the jet stream, friends. It's coming for every single one of us as well. Don't think you're immune to it or then it's not going to get you. There are things you can do to protect yourself, but one of the most important things you can do is to quit funding people like this. Hokoto Hoshi, head of the panel and vice chair of the Prefectural Medical Association, called it unlikely <coughs> pardon me, that radiation was responsible for the increase. 
The prefectural government has conducted three sets of thyroid checkups, it says, following the March 2011 triple meltdown at Tokyo Electric Power Company. Uh, it's the number one power plant. The checkups also covered people who evacuated to other prefectures. The second round of checkups from 2014 confirmed five new sufferers, and a third launched in May last year uncovered two more. The panel decided to consider improving its counting method, as the cancer can be detected during regular medical examinations, not only the government checkups. Now, they've said the lie before. Now, you want to know one of the lies they said? And this one, if, if it wasn't dealing with something so, so drastic, it would be hilarious. They said, well, because we're checking now, we're just finding out that there has always been this much cancer. We just didn't know it because we weren't checking. Okay, friends, we're not talking about uh, an inactive case of herpes or something. We're talking about thyroid cancer. And if there had always been this much thyroid cancer that they just didn't test for, then they, untreated, they would just be dead. So there would be this high number of people, un, very young, having died of thyroid cancer well before the nuclear disaster. And I'm sorry that was not the case. And that's, that's not what's causing it now. It's not, it's not because we're testing more. It's because we're poisoning. Uh, we, we have poisoned the entire world with Fukushima. And the worst part is we have no idea how to shut it down. We haven't invented anything yet that can even get close to it. This is from uh, uh, Gazetswatska.com. It's a Gazeta Wazizaka. It's, uh, it's foreign, but how about this? It's on natural news. Uh, media blackout over unimaginable radiation levels detected at Fukushima mocks fuel melts through the reactor floor with a half-life of 24,000 years. Okay, it's only posted 16 hours ago. Listen to this. Media blackout over unimaginable radiation levels detected at Fukushima mocks fuel melts through reactor floor. Natural news, there are times when I'm convinced that humanity is a suicidal cult of complete idiots whose only real achievement is figuring out the increasingly obscene ways to distract themselves from reality. While everyone was busy watching Lady Gaga channel satanic symbolism and occult imagery in front of 100 million viewers at the Super Bowl, for instance, the Fukushima nuclear accident just got a whole lot worse. Almost no media outlets in the U.S. even mention the alarming news, either. The Guardian reports that radiation levels reach what experts call unimaginable, intensity inside the containment structure of you know, the number two reactor clocking in at 600 and 530 sieverts per hour. Now, to give you, uh, we'll go into exactly how much that is, you'll be surprised, but you don't see this, this widespread, if it's contained in what they call the containment vessel. The only way you can see something like this is if it has melted down and through, and we all know what a melt out is, that was the explosion, but the uh, meltdown and the melt through, where it goes into the containment vessel, into the water table, if you will. How much is uh, 530 sieverts per hour? Well, a sievert is a unit of radiation exposure, and exposure to just five sieverts in a short amount of time has a 50% kill rate among humans. When it comes to radiation exposure, the intensity of the exposure, which is the inverse of the duration of the exposure, for those of you that don't know what that means, you can judge how bad it is by how long you were near it. It matters a lot. Absorbing five sieverts of radiation over a year's time is not fatal, but exposure to five sieverts in just 60 seconds, for example, will almost certainly kill you from radiation poisoning. And it's a miserable way to die, by the way. Yeah, it is. You, you, your, your, your organs start to bleed out through your nose and your mouth, and they turn to mush, and you can't control your bowels, and you, you die a horrible death. Because people don't understand this, but because they don't necessarily feel the burn, you are cooking. Okay, you're cooking yourself. Radiation, um, the way it causes cancer, and I've gone over this before on this show, but I've got a lot of people coming in, I can see that I haven't been here before. Each becquerel, it's a, it's a unit of measurement, 
is one nuclear explosion per second. It's on a tiny microscopic level. It explodes inside of you. And if that explosion hits another cell and that cell mutates, it becomes cancer. And each time you see a Becquerel, you have one chance per second of a cell mutating into cancer. Okay, well, let's put this into proper perspective, shall we? We've measured some of this radiation in the trillions of Becquerels. You have trillions of opportunities per second for a, um, a change to take place that could kill you. That's what we're talking about here, to put this into terms that everyone can understand as to why this is so important. The radiation level measured inside the Fukushima Reactor 2 is 530 sieverts per hour, over 100 times the intensity necessary to kill most humans who are exposed for just a short time. The melted fuel rods, which are generating this radiation, have apparently bored a hole through the floor of the containment vessel, meaning that they are very close to coming in contact with groundwater or ocean water, and they may have already struck it. Now, once that happens, it gets into the water table, it gets into the food, and it gets into you, is what it does. And it does what I just talked a minute ago about in terms of mutating cells. And we haven't even gotten into things like uh, the worsening of already existing conditions, of which we know nuclear poison does. Melting fuel rods also vastly increase the risk of nuclear fuel criticality, which could explode the deadly radioactive elements into the open atmosphere. Yet nearly the entire mainstream media remains in a complete blackout over the devastating development that threatens the sustainability excuse me, of all life in the Northern Hemisphere. He said, I guess talking about Trump's so-called Muslim ban, which isn't a ban on Muslim, must be more important. I uh, think about what he's saying here, friends. This is the single worst disaster in all of recorded history, and some of the numbers that I've given you are, are, are just the tip of the iceberg compared to the accumulated effects that this has had over a very, very long period of time. So, what are you going to do about it? Why'd you tune in? Well, there are things you can do about it. You can share this video, you can like this video, and you can let other people know about it. Don't like my video? Great. Steal my information and make better videos. I don't really care. What I do care about is getting the truth out. Okay. I care about telling you things like, and no, I'm not getting paid. Buy this from wherever you want. Uh, uh, two emergency or the generic version per day gives you 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. If you can hit 3,000 milligrams a day, you have your body at what's called bowel level vitamin C. And that prevents a lot of radiological damage. Now, nothing like 530 sieverts isn't going to help you. But, like I always say, a good diet, which I don't really have, a good diet and a very good vitamin regimen, which I do have, is the key to at least postponing a lot of things that could be coming from Fukushima. So, I mean, uh, what do you do? You hit share on this video. You look up uh, how to almost never get sick. <clears throat> yes, that's the name of it. It's on my channel. It's free. I let you know what vitamins I take. I get paid nothing from any of them, so buy any maker brand you want. That's not what I'm getting at here. I'm letting you know that there are th some things that I've learned that can prevent a lot of the damage we're seeing. Bentonite clay is another one. We're going to get into the last half of the show, friends. I just want to give a shout-out to the Seacrest Motel. They're up in Sandusky at Cedar Point. And uh, how many of you are roller coaster fans? Me, I am obsessed with roller coasters. I really am. And uh, they got races up there, all kind of things going on in Sandusky. It's a very summer city. Well, you're not going to want to pay a fortune in your hotel. Go to the Seacrest Motel, let them know that you heard about it from the correct views. Not only are you going to get a rate that's uh, a couple hundred dollars lower, I mean, we're talking uh, barely 70 bucks on most days, but you're going to get an even better deal when you mention the correct views, because they're a sponsor of the show, and we're proud to have them on, because they are absolutely wonderful to their guests. Uh, Christelle and I had gone there long before they were ever a show sponsor, I, uh, I promise you. All right, guys, <clears throat> we've got uh, two more stories to get to here. This is also from the Japan Times News. Five workers exposed to radioactive materials at Ibaraki Nuclear Facility. Why well, isn't that convenient? So maybe even when everything is running like it's supposed to, this is such a game of Russian roulette 
that you don't really know what it is that could happen at any given moment. You get this, something like this happens to you once, do you know what happens to you immediately? Cell structure, cell damage begins on a structural level. The building blocks of who you are become changed every time you get hit by radio, radioactivity. And it's, it's, it's accumulative. It doesn't go away over time. It's not something that vanishes over time. That is why this show, and I'm urging you to join it, is anti-nuclear in every possible way. It's where I agree with the Democrats, which never happens. Five workers exposed to radioactive materials. Listen to this. Five workers at a nuclear research facility in Iraqi prefecture had their gloves and shoes exposed to radioactive material Tuesday, the operator of the facility said. Um, the word of the day, Silkwood. Leave it in the comment line. I'll make sure you get something free. Uh, word of the day, comment line, Silkwood. Uh, if you don't know... What could happen if you get exposed to this on your shoes or your gloves like these people did? Go ahead and look up the movie Silkwood, particularly if you don't know what it is. You'll be rather shocked. It says the Japan Atomic Energy Agency said up to 24 becquerels. Now we said what a becquerel was. One radioactive explosion on a small level inside the body that can mutate other nearby cells and cause cancer. 24 becquerels of radioactive material were found inside the noses of three of the workers, prompting the agency to check whether they faced the danger of internal exposure to radiation. Now, look how they word that, friends. Now, I'm going to... See that? That's up my nose. Okay, we'll, we'll get gross here if we have to. That's up my nose. Now, the last time I checked, that was internal exposure. For that matter, that's a mucous membrane. That's radioactive poisons in their face, near their eyes, in their brain, giving off 24 becquerels of radioactivity per second, quite likely for the rest of their life. How would, how would you feel every time you got a cold if you were them? You would wonder if that was the beginning of something that was absolutely going to devastate your life. And yet we allow these plants in these facilities to just exist without doing anything whatsoever to stop. We just let our controllers shepherd us around wherever they want, and they don't have our best interest at heart, friends. They cared about the bottom line. They don't really care that these people are juiced for life. They'll just find other stooges to do it. That's the way they look at them. The official at the agency said it's hard to say the detected level is extremely small, though it does not pose an immediate threat to their health. No, they just get to wonder when it's going to turn into cancer. That's got to be remarkable. Callous, callous bastards. There were no radiation leaks outside the fuel research building and its Oriki Research and Development Center, the agency said. Yeah, but who knows how many times the employees left the building and uh, contaminated uh, with contaminated whatever, spreading it wherever they went. The bag used to the conveyor on a container for nuclear fuel materials tore when the workers were inspecting another container that included it, according to the agency. So we've got nuclear fuel, which is the most deadly thing known to... It's the most deadly uh, element, or whatever you want to call it. It's the most deadly material known to man. It kills every form of life that exists. And we have it in something that has a container with a cover that can tear. The workers, all men in their 20s to 50s, wore masks to cover their mouths and noses but could have inhaled the radioactive material. None of the five have complained of ill health. All right, now listen. That's another thing you can take away from this. If there's a nuclear disaster in your area, they're going to give you these masks, and you're really going to feel like you're safe, like something has really been done for you. Do you realize that these elements are so small that they can get right in? Do you know that? Do you know that that's why they tell you to not whatever you do to not touch your eyes <clears throat> with your hands if you're around a terrorist act. Because if it's chemical, biological, or God forbid, nuclear, you can actually, right in your eyes, wipe many, many becquerels, uh, more damage, I should say, potential damage into your body. And a um, good way to put it is your radiological count will go way up, and your risk of health and damage will go way up. 
and you can see it all ties together. You can see that Helen Caldicott is right. It's a, it's a front for the nuclear industry. But don't think these masks that they give you do anything to help you because they don't. Masato Kato, the senior official at the agency, said the workers were following ordinary procedures during their inspection work. In other words, as I put this into layman's terms for everyone, the regular way that we handle nuclear material means that one small accident can, can result in a nuclear poisoning. But don't be alarmed, everything is fine. Nuclear materials used for research are stored at the building where researchers handle plutonium and uranium to conduct studies of new types of fuel for a faster reactor. Yeah, a faster reactor to blow up. Friends, that is where we are today. That is what we are actually looking. Well, we've got one story left. I've got more people coming in. Don't go away. That is actually where we're at today, friends. Where we have people poisoned with nuclear radioactivity. And we just go ahead and keep the power plants open. We keep the nuclear for t uh, bomb testing facilities open. Why? Because we've allowed the dollar to run our lives. Not us to run our lives. Not our leaders to run our lives. But whether or not GE can make a few extra dollars by hosing us all to run our lives. That brings us to the dumdy of the day. Yes, we have one, and it is quite a dumdy indeedy. The dumdy of the day, for those of you that don't know, the stupidest story of any given series of stories. And this goes to the IAEA. There's the music. The idiot music to the IAEA. Hey, friends, you can see why right here. Now listen to this. On June 1st, 2017, Japan provided the IAEA with a copy of a report of the discharge record for the seawater monitoring results at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station during May, which the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has sent to all international missions in Japan. The report contains information on discharges from the subdrain to groundwater drain systems, don't go away, as well as the groundwater bypassing conducted during the last month of May. In both cases, in advance of the action, TEPCO analyzes the quality of the groundwater to be discharged and announces the results. Here comes the dumb D friends, and you'll be glad you stayed. These results confirm that the radiation level sampled water was substantially below the operational target set by TEPCO. Do you know why? Two reasons. First of all, they only test for the few of the elements that they know are least likely to show up. And second of all, they have raised the rates so high on what's already allowed to be in that there is no tangible way to even test it. So let's say, for instance, this level here is dangerous. Well, they know it's up here. So they're going to say that this level is safe. So that when it tests here, not where it's supposed to be, it comes up as safe. That's the dumb deal of the day, friends. I've given you the facts. Take them, share them, do something with them. Uh, thank you for subscribing, thank you for listening, thank you for hitting share, and above all else, thank you, dear God, for donating at the correct views on Hotmail.com through PayPal. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless. That's your massive Fukushima update. Uh, there'll be the Dunce Cap of the Month award either Friday or Monday.